to say that my mother was born in India of missionary parents, and this was one of their favorite songs in India. She spent her first 10 years there growing up in the home. She said, this is a wonderful song. I want you to learn it. And so I think India became the first spontane uh, first sense of learning it so we could uh, learn it from my mother who learned it in India. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for Christ and Calvary. Thank you for the message of this song. What a wonderful Savior. As we approach the Easter season, thank you that he's not confined to the tomb, but indeed he lives, and he's told us to go tell the message. So we just pray, Lord, that your blessing will be upon us as we worship you this morning and learn in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Thank you. I uh, <clears throat> well, I'll probably be coughing because I have the everlasting cough from the cold. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm grateful that I can still walk and talk and eat every now and then. Appreciate it. It's been a rough couple of weeks, so I was off school for... Well, almost the whole week. I went to school on Monday, went home at 9 o'clock, went to school on Tuesday, went home at 9 o'clock, and I said, forget it, I'm not coming back. So, <coughs> so <clears throat> unfortunately, God provides a, a, a lady who, a former one of our former parents, and, and I've had both of her kids, and she just loves subbing my class. So I thought, come, let her come, because she is so good at it. You, know, you, don't, you don't always know who you're going to get. Uh, teachers understand this, and uh, so when you're kind of iffy as to whether you should go or not, if you don't know who's going to take your class. Now, I've had some interesting experiences with substitutes. Just to let you know, one day, I was out for a whole week, on well, one day, when I first started teaching, had the flu. I came back in, and this is, I'm teaching uh, third grade. I come back in, and all of my classroom was rearranged. The kids were in different seats. My desk was rearranged. Everything I had in the desk was in different drawers. Uh, I almost went nuts. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, what happened here? <clears throat> uh, I guess that whoever was there thought that uh, I needed rearranging. <laughs> I may have. I don't know. I didn't think so, but <coughs> excuse me. Well, let's take a look at some things about the purpose of the Holy Spirit today. And starting in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, and then John 14, to start us off with. <coughs> excuse me. Now, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. John 14, verses 23 through 26. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring your remembrance to all that I said to you. A couple of things I want to just point out from those scriptures before I get, even get into this uh, lesson. One of the things was is that when Jesus spoke in chapter 7 of inner, out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And he's talking about you and me. Living water coming out of our spirit as, as we live our lives. Kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And then uh, in John 14 he says, the Father will teach you all things. And I think, well, I don't know what to do. Well, 
God will provide through the Holy Spirit the teaching that we need to know somewhere along the way. You've all been experienced this. That you have this puzzle going on and uh, you just quite, and pretty soon God brings it from some distance. It might through the radios, what somebody says, whatever. Now I have, uh, <clears throat> I have this um, cough and I had a, a message today from the Lord. It said, it said that donut therapy is the best. <laughs> and I thought, awesome. You know, if a, doc, if a doctor can tell me that, I'll eat it. I, I had to I just throw that in there. Anyway, uh, that was, uh, uh, yes. Anyway, um, yeah. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the, the humor. What's the, what was the purpose of the coming of the Holy Spirit? Why, why was he coming? Yeah, there's there's um, some things, but the main things we think about, we, we uh, think of as coming as a counselor and coming to seal our salvation and coming to give us awareness of the presence of Jesus in our life. Those are the things that we, that we think of many times when we think about the Holy Spirit. What does he do? And right before Jesus went back to heaven, he said in Acts, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. The gift, the gift from God, this Holy Spirit that comes upon you. And when he comes on to you at your invitation, now I know that <clears throat> there are some Christians, and I'm not, I'm, I'm just going to say this anyway, whether it wrinkles or not. There are some Christians who feel that unless you have been uh, spiritually blessed by certain, at certain times with the filling of the Holy Spirit, that uh, you really don't have the Holy Spirit until that happens. Uh, the teaching that I understand is that when you ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, at that time, God gives you the Holy Spirit. And Jesus makes you the awareness of Jesus in your life, and that Holy Spirit then is what's there to guide you through the rest of your life ups and downs and trials and tribulations and whatever, joys and things. The Holy Spirit is there. He lives within you and becomes then that part of that living water that should come out of us. And that living water isn't just what we speak, it's just who we are as a person. Um, and that, that's what I think. So here's, um, here's what uh, Ruth Graham Lott says. He says, When the Holy Spirit comes into you at your invitation... You receive as much of him as you will ever receive. What? He does, you don't get just a little bit of him and a little bit more later. When you have this uh, ecstatic experience, you get a little more of him. Since he's a person, you can't get him in pieces. Think about that. Okay. Why is it then that he seems to come in pieces? He comes to us unconditionally while we surrender to him conditionally. Think about this for a minute. And he can get some of you. We can't get you to get part of him. But we give him just sometimes our Sundays but not our Mondays. You heard that before? I heard that when I was younger, I think. He gives us, we give him our actions but not our attitudes. We give him our relationships, but not our reputations. We give him our time, but not our thoughts. We give him our burdens, but not our bodies. We give him our prayers, but not our pleasures. We give him our grief, but not our goals. And we give him our health, not our hearts. The Holy Spirit who now lives in you is the same Holy Spirit that was in Genesis 1. And I wanted to kind of read the scripture because I think it's important. Here's the scripture. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and void. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving or hovering over the surface of the waters. And the next verse says, God said, let there be light. Let there be light. That same Holy Spirit that was working on the surface of the earth. And when God said, let there be light, kabam, there's light over the dark, in the darkness. 
That same Holy Spirit is now at work in your life and my life. Uh, hovering over our hearts. I want to just kind of share this with you because I think this has been um, blessing me as I've read through this. He hovers over our heart preparing us to love God and to be fully aware of his love for me. He's been hovering over my mind to prepare me to understand spiritual things and the truth of his word. He's been hovering over my will, preparing me to make decisions that are pleasing to him. And all the power of God, the same power that hung the stars in place and put the planets on their courses and transformed earth from that dark void into what the beautiful place it is, is that same one who plans to can energize you and strengthen you to become the person God has created you to be. At our age, that's important to know. It's important to know. And I'm talking about those of us who are a little more mature than others. Uh, physically. But the, the, God has, has given us this amazing person to be with us, to get, live our lives as we go along. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I forget about that. And I try to do it all on my own self, and it always bomb, bombs out. Remember when Angel Gabriel came to Mary? What he said to her? Startling announcement. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And so the Holy One to be born in you will be called the Son of God. Well, when you and I place our faith in Jesus Christ and invite him to come in, the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Now, for some people, when that happens, it's a very physical kind of thing. And for some people, it's a very emotional kind of thing. For some people, they don't see anything. But they know down deep there's a change. There's a change. And uh, the power of God that overshadows us and gives us the life of Jesus in us as we live our lives to try to live our lives pleasing to God the way that Jesus would have us to do that. Uh, so we don't conceive a physical life. We have a spiritual life in the person of the Holy Spirit. It is the indwelling spirit who sets me free from the habits of sin. It sets me free from the habits of sin. And that power then gives, the, he, that, that same power gives the, the uh, ability to live a life that's pleasing to God directly related to how much of control I give him. As I give him more control over my life, he was able to give us, give me a greater blessing on using my life. When I pull a drawer of my secret part of my life that I don't want him to know, and I put things in there that interferes with the relationship with God. As I can open that door and turn the light on and the darkness flees, then the power of the Holy Spirit comes in and allows me and you, same thing, uh, to flow out, the water of the Holy Spirit flowing out of us. And uh, in Ephesians, it says, Ephesians 5.18, it says, be filled with the Spirit. Somebody said it's kind of like uh, this spring that comes out and flows down over this these rocks into an old wooden bucket and then it overflows into the pond and goes on from there. And uh, that's just like the water of the Holy Spirit just comes out and works in our lives and overflows and spreads around and gives the life-giving water to things that are below us. The only problem is, is that sometimes that flow gets plugged up. Now, you had some rain the other day. Um, and we were... Uh, it poured down rain at our house, I guess, on Friday. Anyway, the, the, the gutter at the, on the back of the patio got clogged up, apparently. And well, the water was just going over. You know, it was supposed to go down the drain. It wasn't going down the drain, apparently. And so my granddaughter got my grandson out, and he, yeah, sure enough, all kinds of leaves and branches and whatever were caught in there. And I hadn't even thought about cleaning it out. But, uh, uh, and so funny, as soon as he did, took the clog out, what do you think happened? Whew, down it went. Same thing when sin's in our life. Clogs up. 
that power, that flow of the Holy Spirit as he was able to work in our lives to clog it up. We've got to get the clog out of there. I don't know about you, but I hate unclogging sinks. They're so gross. Uh, the, uh, I can, I'm okay with this toilet because I can do the thing here. But I can the sinks just, they, you know, there's somebody in my family that thinks they're going to barf every time they think of it. <clears throat> um, but when we clog our life and we don't allow the power of the Holy Spirit to live, to live at, within us and guide us and give us the, the, uh, the overflowing things, we lose our attractiveness. And then we lose our usefulness. And we kind of get stagnant. And uh, there's nothing refreshing around us that would draw people to. So what, had, what the question was is, what is hindering you and me from being filled with the Holy Spirit? What gets in the way? It might be a particular area in your life. Maybe you are angry about something and they just haven't resolved that yet. It could be our uh, love for money. It could be my love for donuts. You know. uh, but whatever it is that's hindering the flow of the Holy Spirit in our lives and whatever's happening in your life, if, there's, if you're feeling like you're stagnant, and I've been there many times. If you feel like you're stagnant, take a look and see what's in the way, what's clogging it up. There could be you have to take the sticks out. You need to have to take them out and move them along. So, because when you do that, let, you let him loose. And when he is loose, then the power of the Holy Spirit just comes in and we know that that gives us the joy and the uh, ability to do the things we need to do, the energy to do it, uh, and the relationships develop and people around you are going, what's different about you? What's different about you? Should there be something different? You live a victorious, triumphant life. And we can't do that without the power of the Holy Spirit. That is part of who we are as Christians. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. In 2 Corinthians, the freedom is freedom from sin, Freedom from selfishness, sp freedom from spiritual defeat, and freedom from Satan's snares. He allows us to have his guidance. And I think that's it. the freedom to reflect Jesus as we are. He says in 2 Corinthians, he says, transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit being transformed, and we hear this word a lot, <laughs> uh, transformed into his likeness, into his glory, because it comes from the Lord. There's nothing we can do about that. It's the Spirit that does that. As we allow the Holy Spirit to come in and just get rid of the clogs, and just let him work and do his work in our lives as we go through whatever it is. Now, how would we know whether we're under the control of the Holy Spirit? What are, the, what are some outward evidences that we could, that we could uh, kind of tell ourselves, I, am, I, am I doing this or what is, what's going on? Well, take a look. Remember Galatians 5.22, there's that list. Okay? And when we see the evidence of these things in our life, we see the evidence of the Holy Spirit working in us. And here they are, remember? Love, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In our Bible classes, we just finished a unit on kindness. We took a survey, and I may, may have told you this, I don't know. We took a survey before we started and, and asked them to see what they thought about how kind people were at school. And we came out <laughs> really bad. <laughs> It was really bad. I said, boy, it looks, it looks to me like when, when you analyze these things that we have an awful lot of self-centeredness going on here. Now, yeah, yeah, it's all about us. <clears throat> so we started this kindness jar. 
So if you see somebody doing something kind, you can write their name on it, throw it in the jar, and we'll give, we're going to pull all the, one of them out on Friday and give a, give a, a recognition. I don't know, they get to go buy a candy bar or something. I'm not sure. I get one free or something. It's not, no big deal, but, but it's a matter. Well, we don't have, yeah. Well, it's not their birthday. Don't just come on birthdays in our school. Uh, no. I do, have to, I do have to tell you this has nothing to do with this, but it has to do with donuts. Okay. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, the sec I, I'm mentoring a second grade teacher, brand new teacher, okay? And uh, she uh, has been concerned about her reading lexile for the kids. That's where they stand on grade level, kind of, I think. I think that's what it is. Uh, they, that's something new since I was in elementary. Anyway, um, she gave them all this test, and everyone in her class went up. She was so excited. She never smiles, though. And I thought, uh, I don't know why, but anyway, I said, hey, everybody in your class went up? Yes, yeah, some went a huge amount. Some just went up a little bit. Everybody went up. And I said, wow, do your kids know that? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm telling them. I said, wait a minute. If everybody in your class went up, it's a time to celebrate. This is a, have a party. <laughs> celebrate. Oh. <laughs> uh? Celebrate? You know, it was almost like a whole brand new thought. And I thought, wow. Uh, I said, yeah. I said, bring them some donuts. And get a lay and put a lay around every kid's head and celebrate. Well, yeah, and smile, and smile. And, and uh, actually, I'm observing her again tomorrow. Uh, I'm not checking for smile. I'm not telling you. Uh, uh, she's a, a very fine young lady, but I think she just is overwhelmed. She's working on her master's degree, too, which is killing her. Uh, the, uh, but anyway, I said, well, how did it go? Oh, the kids love the donuts and the, and the lays. Okay. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh, you know, uh, you just need to, you know, some people are just natural teachers when they come in. They just are natural. Some people have to learn how to be it. <laughs> and sometimes they, they don't get some of this, this kind of thing until they get there. And finally, maybe somebody has to help them. And that's my job, is to help them to do those kind of things. Um, but it has nothing to do with this lesson, <laughs> except <laughs> kindness. <coughs> but <coughs> excuse me. You know, as, we, as the Holy Spirit empowers us to live... Not just for Jesus to be like Jesus. I I was late looking at the um, in the music this morning in the sanctuary, and I and I was wishing I could read all the words. Um, but when they put white letters on green background or yellow background, I, I'm lost. Um, but we He is the one who the Holy Spirit is who the one who forms Christ in us. He's the one that gives us this heart for the Lord, our heart for people heart for whatever ministry God has given you to do in your life. Whatever God has, has, has given you, as you've gone through your life, God has given you the ability to do whatever it is he's given you to do. And you, sometimes we think, I can't do that. I could never do that. I thought I could never teach junior high school. I hated them. <laughs> when, I, when I was going through school. And, and, uh, and I loved elementary kids. Loved working with kids until I ended up in the junior high school. Uh, and I thought, you know, I really kind of like these guys. And since I've been there 30 years, it's a good idea. <laughs> <coughs> and I smile. <clears throat> but, uh, he says in Galatians 4.19, My children, with whom I again labor in Christ, I want Christ until Christ is formed in you. Don't be just an imitation of Christ, but be an embodiment of it. 
And Jesus continued to teach as his cycle had the Holy Spirit could enlighten us. He gave him this great hope. And uh, one of the things I was, somebody was asking me last week, how do we know that the, tes- the New Testament is true? How do we know all these things really happened? Well, let me go back to this scripture here. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. There it is. As men, and then as you go through the scripture, as men were wrote, as God led them to, to write it down. Um, there's no, as, as long as you have a faith, there's no question about it. It's when the people who have trouble believing that, that create problems for, this, for, for them. Um, remember that Jesus, before he went, he said, uh, before long the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. What? If you're, if you're going to die, how am I going to see you? The world sees Jesus as a man, sometimes a prophet, a uh, great man, uh, but it's the Holy Spirit that opens our spiritual eyes of understanding, and we see him this, not just a man. We see him as the creator, our creator. He's the one that made us. We see him as the Jehovah in the Old Testament. And these papers are sticking together again. Is that very frustrating to you? We see him as the long-awaited Messiah. We see him as only the Son of God, the only Son of God, the Redeemer of Israel, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world, the Good Shepherd, the Risen Lord, the Judge of all the universe, and the reigning King of Kings. That's how we see him. How can we, can, how can we see him that way? Only through the lens of the power of the Holy Spirit. Because that's what works it in our lives. When we are convinced that who Jesus is, we receive this from the Holy Spirit. And then he said in John 16, When he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of it on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Isn't that interesting? He will only tell us what he hears from God, from Jesus. He will bring glory to me by, make, taking what is, by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. You know, even when, Jesus, when the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, it gives us this, this confidence, this evidence that he cares about us, that he cares about our Christ-likeness. When he, when he convinces, convicts us of sin. And when, he, and when he does that, he's, he's attentive to our spiritual growth. He pays attention to us. And he's active in transforming us into becoming the people that God wants us to be. So, what's the word for comforter? Come on. Paraclete. Paracletos. Okay. One called alongside to help. So, when we get to this point, this, as we run this race of life, I like this, what uh, Anne Lan and uh, Graham Lotz has said. She says, when we get to that part, in the race of life, God, our Heavenly Father, has come along beside us through the period of the Holy Spirit, and when we think we can't go one more step, when we train, the race becomes too painful beyond endurance, when our hearts are heavy, when our minds become dull, and our spirits are burned out, he comes alongside us and puts his everlasting arms around us, and he hugs us, and he gently walks with us to the finish. And then when that happens, as we get to the finish, and as we, as we have this victory in Christ, you can almost hear the applause from heaven. Remember what it says in Hebrews? We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. As God leads us through, our victory then is more than we can even know. Because there's a lot of unseen things going on. We are in a spiritual battle, ladies and gentlemen. We know that. We're in a spiritual battle, and only through the power of the Holy Spirit can we fight that battle. And and learn the Word of God and teach the Word of God and speak the Word of God and live the Word of God in our lives 
no matter what, sta what stage of life we're in. I liked what uh, Pastor Jeff said about his grandfather. What a great attitude. I hope that's my attitude. Something like that happens to me. Our witness is only to others here, but to those in heaven too. And we are members of a worldwide family, worldwide family of Christians. And I think of the Christians in Africa who are being slaughtered, in Asia who are being slaughtered, the um, Middle East being slaughtered. Uh, and I wonder how come God loves us so much that he let us be live here you know, and to have live the life that we have. Okay, well, you know what gives us that victory? What gives us the victory? The power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit only comes through faith. Faith is the victory. We're going to sing. Page 31. fingers are not working great. Faith, faith is the victory. And I'm on 32 instead of 31. Sorry. Okay, ready? Encamped along the hills of mighty Christian soldiers' eyes And thus the battle ere the night shall nail the going skies Against the foe in veils below faith is small. The Holy Spirit is still there encouraging us and helping us to hold on by our fingernails. God, thank you for sending him to help us through our lives and to give us your guidance. We ask for good health for all of us. We pray for its safety on the roads and in the, wherever we're going. And we pray, God, especially that you, we will allow the Holy Spirit to take away take control this week. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.